On this Memorial Day, we honor the men and women who died while serving for our country. Today, community members made their way to Liberty Lake to show their appreciation in a special ceremony. Heat advisories go into effect starting tomorrow as temperatures may be pushing 100 degree heat as well as record highs. Plus, today marks the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, one of the most violent racial attacks in American history. How students are honoring the legacy of the once thriving Greenwood Business District. Good evening to you and thanks for being here tonight. I'm Regina on this Memorial Day. One park in Liberty Lake is lit in red, white and blue to pay tribute to the men and women who call the Inland Northwest their home and who lost their lives in service to this country. Joshua Robinson takes us to the Liberty Lake Memorial Park. Sergeant First Class Dale Beatty. Private First Class Aaron McClyman. Sergeant Derek J. Minnis. Just some of the hundreds of names and pictures honored this weekend at Liberty Lake Memorial Park. For each lost life in service to our country, a flag and a lit bag. Tonight, a handful of nearby neighbors paying their respects during the waning hours of daylight. But it was once the sun began to set that the luminary tribute began to glow. A small thanks for a grand sacrifice, adding some red, white, and blue to the night sky this Memorial Day. Joshua Robinson, Crim2 News. Beautiful display tonight is the last night those lights will be lit. The memorial will continue through tomorrow morning. Well, it is going to be a hot, hot and hot the next couple of days. So here's a friendly reminder to you to take extra precautions to stay safe. Even when it may not feel hot outside, the inside of your car can get up to 129 degrees in just 30 minutes. So don't leave your kids or pets in the car. Also be careful walking your pets on asphalt because it could easily burn their little paws. Lastly, if you're doing anything outside, make sure you're drinking enough water because you can easily get dehydrated. So very good tips there. So with that, let's bring in meteorologist Thomas Patrick, who is out on the Outdoor Weather Center for us here tonight. So Thomas, we talk about pets. We talk about staying hydrated, doing all those things. And that's so important these next couple of days because you're saying that we could reach 100 degrees, right? Yeah, 100 degrees for parts of the area. And yeah, we have to treat our pets like members of our own family. If you wouldn't want to walk barefooted on the sidewalk, I don't think our uh, cats and dogs want to do that either. Make sure to give them plenty of water and don't leave your pets in the car, even if you have the window cracked, because that is not enough to keep any kind of fresh air moving through, especially at the temperatures we are forecasting. There are heat advisories to basically make us cautious of these things, mainly for central Washington. But while Spokane and Coeur d'Alene is not under the advisory, it's still going to get plenty hot even in our region as well. Today was only, and I say only because of how hot it's going to be, only 83 degrees and matched our warmest temperature so far this year, but I'll tell you what standing out here at 10 o'clock at night. This is why it felt like a hot day because it's still in the 70s as of 10 o'clock at night. By far the warmest I've ever stood out here in the Outdoor Weather Center at this hour. So as we go from 74 tonight, it is going to easily be rising into the 90s for tomorrow. It looks like Wednesday is going to be our hottest day. A lot of red, a lot of pink on the map representing the 90s and 100 degree heat that we have in the picture here should easily be breaking some record highs for some regions. I'll show you who will see those record highs fall this week and how long this heat wave is going to last before things do start to cool down at least a little bit later on in our long term outlook. Thomas, thank you. While Memorial Day typically marks the unofficial start of summer, it also marks the beginning of the 100 deadliest days on the road. The 100 deadliest days of summer is a time period between Labor uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day where the number of teenager deaths behind the wheel drastically increases. Just this year, the Spokane Police Department has already responded to five fatal crashes and 21 serious injury collisions. Last year, 88 people lost their lives on Idaho roads between Memorial and Labor Day. So while you're traveling back from your Memorial Day weekend, just remember to take it easy on the roads. 
100 years ago tonight, a white mob fueled by hatred, racism and misinformation raided, firebombed and destroyed a black neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In the matter of hours, 35 square blocks known as Greenwood were turned into smoldering ruins. This weekend, there have been a series of events nationwide marking this anniversary and remembering the hundreds of people murdered. People gathered in Tulsa today to dedicate a prayer wall outside of one of the surviving buildings. Well, an estimated 200 businesses known as Black Wall Street were destroyed during the massacre. Now Tulsa students developed an innovative way to honor their legacy and learn some important tech skills in the process. 100 years after it was burned to the ground, the legacy of Black Wall Street will continue, this time digitally, thanks to tech industry veteran and Tulsa native Michael Vaughn. Hey, welcome, welcome. I'm and his Michael. students, the Urban Coders Guild which teaches STEM skills to kids from underserved communities. This was one of those crazy ideas that come to you at 2 a.m. There was a whole community of businesses that existed. And so the idea is if, if those businesses existed in 2021, they would most likely have a website. They would most likely have a mobile app and we're teaching kids to make websites and we're teaching kids to make mobile apps. And so it made sense that we do this. This is historicblackwallstreet.com a collection of web pages for businesses, including the Dreamland Theater, the Hotel Alexander, and the Red Wing Cafe, noted at the time for its swell electric piano. You're not only giving them a computer science lesson, you're also giving them a history lesson. Absolutely, my kids are learning, you know, the web technologies, the mobile app technologies, but we partner with Tulsa Community College. They're doing the research, and then there was another group of people from Tulsa Community College that were doing graphic design and logos, and so this is a collaborative effort very much in the spirit of Greenwood, very much in the, the spirit of Black Wall Street. What do you want people who see this to get out of it? I want them to understand the importance of our history. Brother and sister Isaac and Raven Arterberry are two of 40 students in the Urban Coders Guild. Isaac researched Vernon AME Church, the only building that survived the massacre. What is it like creating something digitally, but also physically seeing a piece of it. I think it's interesting that we're able to make it more permanent in a way. Because physically, it could be destroyed and all that, but when you make it digital, it basically lasts forever, which I think is really cool. You can't burn that down. No, you can't. Brenda Nails Alford, a descendant of several survivors of the massacre, said she appreciates the work of students like the Arterberries. It speaks volumes to the legacies that uh, made Black Wall Street, and you all will carry on that legacy. For your young coders, do you think this is connecting them to a, to a past that a lot of people didn't talk about? It's connecting them to a past for sure, but we also want to focus on connecting them to a future that maybe they didn't even imagine, a future working in, in, in tech, maybe being a coder. Is this the next chapter of Black Wall Street? I hope so. I, I would want it to be. Looking ahead now, when Lake City High School students come back to class after the holiday weekend, they will be required to wear masks again. They dropped the mandate after a surprise executive order from the acting lieutenant governor. Governor Brown Little was out of town and has since called the mask mandate ban an irresponsible, self-serving political stunt. Spokane Public Schools will break ground on two new middle schools this week. The two new schools received their names last week. Denny Yasuhara Middle in the Northeast was chosen to honor a beloved teacher. And Pauline Flett Middle in the Northwest pays tribute to a woman who worked to preserve the Salish native language. Both schools are scheduled to be open by the fall of 2022. Another Inland Northwest event to look forward to. Hoop Fest team registration opens up tomorrow. Volunteer applications are also still being accepted. And just a reminder, volunteers do get some pretty awesome Nike swag. Now it's time to pull together your team, come up with a pretty creative name, and register your players. This year, Hoop Fest is scheduled for September 11th and 12th. We continue to remember our nation's heroes on this Memorial Day. Coming up next, a historic nationwide honor by Americans from coast to coast. Very few notes, but uh, has a lot of meaning to every one of them. 
Coming up next, we'll tell you about the second annual TAPS Across America. But before we go to break here tonight, we do want to remember the service members in our own community who made the ultimate sacrifice. We want to thank each and every one of you who have sent us photos of your military members this Memorial Day. From all of us here at CREM2, thank you.